Hello, today is the revision topic for Form 4 KBSM on Chapter 3, Movement of Substances Across a Plasma Membrane. There are two learning objectives for today's lesson. The first one is 3.1, Movement Across the Plasma Membrane. The second one, 3.2, Movement of Substances Across the Plasma Membrane in Everyday Life. Okay, first one, second one. The learning outcome. The first one, explain the movement of water molecules across the plasma membrane by osmosis. Second one, explain the movement of substances across the plasma membrane through the process of active transport. The third one, explain the process of passive transport and active transport in living organism. And the last learning outcome, explain the effect of hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic solution on plant and animal cells. Now, we will do revision on the structure of plasma membrane. The first one, phospholipid bilayer. If you still remember, these are the phospholipid bilayer. Then, the next one, you have pore protein. So, this is pore protein. Okay, and the last one is carrier protein. This is the carrier protein. How can I know which one is the pore protein? Which one is the carrier protein? You can see the pore protein. There is a pore here. And carrier protein, you will see that there is ATP, the energy that will bind to the protein. Now, there are three factors that affect the movement of substances across the plasma membrane. The first one is the size of the molecules. The second one is the polarity of the molecules. And the third factor is the solubility of the molecules in lipid. So for the first one, we are going to see on the small molecules and also ions. Examples of small molecules that is polar molecule is water. An example of non-polar molecules are oxygen and carbon dioxide. An example of ion are potassium ion, sodium ion, calcium ion and magnesium ion. From the diagram, we can see that for the water, okay, since it is a small molecule, it can actually pass through the phospholipid bilayer easily and also the water molecule is able to pass through via pore protein. Channel protein is also known as pore protein. Okay. The type of transport for the water molecule is by osmosis. Okay. And then for the non-polar molecules, oxygen and carbon dioxide, Okay, since they are small molecules, they are able to pass through the phospholipid bilayer by diffusion from higher concentration to the lower concentration region. Okay, same thing for ion. Okay, the example just now, potassium, sodium ion, calcium ion and magnesium ion. Since they are small molecules, they are able to pass through via for protein. Now we look at uh, on the lipid soluble substances. Example of lipid soluble substances are fatty acid, glycerol, vitamin A, D, E, K, vitamin A, D, and the last one is steroid compounds. Since all these molecules are lipid soluble substances, they can easily pass through the phospholipid bilayer via simple diffusion, meaning from a higher concentration of solute to the lower concentration of solute that is under passive transport. Now we look at the movement of large molecules across the plasma membrane. Example of large molecules are glucose and amino acid. From the diagram, we can see that this large molecule uses carrier protein to pass through the plasma membrane. And 
the large molecules move from higher concentration to the lower concentration so it is still under diffusion but it is called as facilitated diffusion because it needs help from the carrier protein and the last one we are going to see on active transport so for the active transport the movement of substances is actually against the concentration gradient meaning the substances move from the lower uh, concentration to the higher concentration and the movement requires energy that is ATP we are going to see sodium potassium pump this is one type of active transport so sodium potassium pump is a mechanism where the ions are pushed against the concentration gradient meaning from the lower concentration they are pushed to the higher concentration okay this can be achieved via active transport and using energy atp now we look at the diagram okay the first one okay the sodium ion bind to the sodium potassium pump you can see they are binding here then the binding of sodium ion will stimulate the phosphate group to bind to the carrier protein the binding of phosphate group to the carrier protein will change the shape of the carrier protein okay when the carrier protein change shape then the sodium ion will be pushed out and the potassium ion will bind to the carrier protein and then the phosphate group just now will leave the carrier protein so the carrier protein will change back to the original shape and the potassium ion release into the cell the next subtopic we are going to see the effect of hypotonic hypertonic and isotonic solution on animal and plant cell so the first one we are going to see the effect of hypotonic solution on animal and plant cell what is hypotonic solution hypotonic solution has a lower solute concentration outside the cell compared to the inside of the cell so due to that water will diffuse into the cell okay via osmosis so for the animal cell animal cell will swell up and then it will burst okay the process is known as hemolysis whereas in plant cell the vacuum you can see it will expand and swell up the plasma membrane will be pushed okay against the cell wall however the plant cell cannot burst because of the rigid cell wall will prevent the cell from bursting and in this state we call the cell is at the turgid state effects of isotonic solution on animal and plant cell isotonic solution has an equal solute concentration outside and inside the cell therefore the water molecule will diffuse in and out of the cell at the same rate okay going out and going in at the same rate okay due to that the cell will retain its normal shape effects of hypotonic solution on animal and plant cell Hypertonic solution is a solution which has higher solute concentration outside the cell compared to the inside of the cell. Due to that, water will diffuse out. Okay, diffuse out from the cell. Okay. Right. By osmosis. 
Okay, for the animal cell, since the water diffuses out from the cell, the animal cell will shrink and shrivel out. The plasma membrane crinkles up. Okay, the cell is known as undergoing the process of crenation. Okay, for the plant cell, okay, the process is known as plasmolysis. Okay, whereby the cytoplasm shrink, okay, pull away from the cell wall, the plasma membrane pull away from the cell wall, okay, and then also you can see the vacuole also shrink. We have come to the end of today's revision. So if you want to take the quiz, check at the more info section. See you next time in my next biology video. Don't forget to subscribe my channel to get the update on more biology videos. Till then, bye.